It's special episode time. We're doing a movie review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Stick around. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! <laughs> All right, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was freaking... Well, I don't know, it kind of sucked. I didn't really like it. Whatever, he's lying. No, it was great. So it was good. Fantastic, fantastic. Was what a great. fantastic movie. Yeah. If you haven't gone out and seen it yet, go see it. Okay, that's our review. Thanks for watching. We can go now? Uh, yeah, I think nope. so. All right, no. so... <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. What can I say? Um, right off the bat, this is, we're not making a spoiler review, but if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to know anything about the movie, yeah, you might want to go watch the movie before you watch this video. But if you don't really care, we're not going to like go through all the plot points. Yeah, we're just no. going to talk about the flick. And by the way, what a fucking fantastic movie. I know. Loved it. Loved it from start to finish. Yeah. Go I'm ahead. just so excited about James Gunn signing on for like, you know, writing and directing both movies and fingers crossed. I'm sure it's the case, but also for volume three. It is. It's already been it's announced. Already signed yeah, up. he oh, is. Sweet. He's already announced. He's going to write and direct volume three. He's just made this franchise like yes. just so enjoyable. And you got to wonder, would he do any, as as good with any other uh, Marvel franchises? Like he's just. I don't know. Pegged for Guardians of the Galaxy. I think he is just because of the characters he gets to play with and kind of recreate and get yeah. new life. What a fun too. flick! Um, I'm sure you've seen the first one. If you're a fan of the first, if you haven't seen the first one, you should watch the first one before you watch the sequel. Definitely. Not because you'll be lost, but just because you will get so much more out of it if you watch the first one first. Because, you know, the first one's the origin story. It's, it's You get introduced to all these great characters, this amazing universe that is Guardians of the Galaxy by James Gunn. Amazing soundtrack. Man, but part two, <laughs> it's like you, you take everything that was right with part one and they just amp it up. Um, from I mean, it's got more comedy, so much more comedy. I mean, jokes... Dad jokes, crappy jokes. They're just they're just throwing every joke against the wall, and if it sticks, great. If it doesn't stick, screw it. We're, we're keeping it. Keeping it anyway. And that makes it so good. Yep. Um, they amped up the comedy. They amped up the action times ten. Yes. Uh, they amped up. I mean, just the characters got so much more. Oh my gosh. Emotion and screen yeah. times. Like you get to know each and every character individually mm -hmm. in this movie. I mean, it's. Go see the first one, then go see the second one. Yep. If you haven't already seen it, and it's worth it. Drax, by all means, is my new favorite character. All right, yeah, let's talk about some of the characters. Drax killed it. Oh Everybody my gosh. like in the first one, it was Groot. Uh -huh. Everybody loved Groot. In the second one, man, Drax <laughs> just is steals the entire show. Every scene with Drax is quality. Who would have known Batista would be no. like one of my favorite actors right now? Know, man. Wrestlers make good actors. Right? Dwayne Johnson, come on. That's a good point. Dwayne Johnson, you mean The Rock? <laughs> Who's that? I'm talking about Dwayne, the pain train Johnson. Oh, gotcha. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Drax nails it. <laughs> uh, Baby Groot is adorable. Yep. Uh, every scene with Baby Groot. This is right at the beginning of the movie. So again, not spoilers, but just we're going to talk a little bit about the flick. Yeah. Right from the start, it, it just starts out great. Um, well, actually, from the very start, you get to see some amazing CGI that is a young Kurt Russell. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. It's like Kurt Russell that from Overboard. Say, yeah, <laughs> if you saw, like if you saw young. Civil War, Captain America Civil War, when they did a young Tony Stark, mm -hmm. it's, it's that good, but better. Better. I couldn't even... I mean, I wouldn't have been able to tell if it was CGI or not. Obviously, no, it's CGI. Yeah, it's, it's like young... Like, Kurt Russell looks like he's in his late 20s, yeah. zipping around in his Camaro or his Trans Am with... Peter Quill's mom. They brought back Peter Quill's mother. You remember her from the first movie. She's in her deathbed. She's riddled with cancer. She, she dies. No hair. She's just a frail thing. But now you get to see her in her youth. In her youth. Long flowing blonde hair. Yeah. And they brought back yeah. the same actress to play the same role, which was, I'm was so cool. glad they did. Cause, yeah. And it wasn't a big part, but it was an important part mm -hmm. to bring her back. So that was awesome. You get to see young Kurt Russell. You get to see young, healthy Peter's mom. And then the movie starts, and it starts to just an excellent fight scene. Uh, you you leave off in the end of the first one, and they're just now becoming a team, mm -hmm. and now now they're fully formed. And it's great to see them all fighting together. They're fighting as a unit. They're off, you know, doing some mission to to make money. 
That's what they do. They're basically they're like the A team. They're heroes for hire. And it was just so great to see them right off the bat all yeah. fighting together. It's, it's right out of the comics. It's and it's you know like Chuck said, it's action packed. It's funny. It's it, like it's everything wrapped up into one. Yeah. In the opening oh, credits. God, every there's it's like you can't. Like, awesome. It doesn't go ten minutes without five amazing jokes. I mean the whole movie <laughs> is funny, but it's not slapsticky and, and dumb. It's just it's great humor. Yep. You get to see Baby Groot right off the bat being hilarious right at the beginning. <laughs> um, I don't know. So the, op the opening fight sequence is fantastic. It sets the stage for the whole film. Uh, Baby Groot's great. Um, there's so much to talk about. You get introduced to Ego, oh. which you've seen from the trailers. Ego oh. is uh, Peter Quill's father. Now, Ego, for those of you who know the comic books, his name, his full name is Ego the Living Planet. And you... Going into the film, I wasn't sure. Are they just going to call him Ego? Are they going to do the whole living planet thing? Because in the comics, he's a big planet head. Purple, red planet. He's just a planet <laughs> with a face. And that's Ego the living planet. But in the movie, it's Kurt Russell as a living, breathing, normal-looking human. Mm -hmm. but as the movie progresses, you actually, they eventually show you he Ego the living planet. planet. You see cool. his head, his big purple. It was right <laughs> out of the comics when they did that one shot. It wasn't a, a, a huge part of it. They did this one shot where you actually get to see Ego's Face. Face on a big purple planet, and it looks right out of the comics. Thank you, James Gunn. James Gunn, you <laughs> killed it, man. Everything I wanted out of this movie, I got. Yeah. Did it exceed cool. my wildest expectations? No, but it met my highest expectations. Yep. I mean, I was expecting to be kind of low, but it it met what I was hoping it would be. Such a profound statement, Chuck Lindsay. Mm. That was great. <laughs> I wrote it down. Good way to right oh, here. Good way to put it. Ex met my most my profound. Nah, nah, see, he didn't even, nah, whatever. But it was great, Steven. <laughs> uh, Yondu mm. and the Ravagers. Oh my god. If you remember Yondu from the, he's, you know, blue face, pink plastic mohawk, whistle, whistle that, arrow. with a little arrow that just kills everybody. <laughs> Yondu plays a big part in this movie, and man, do I love Yondu. Yeah, he's great. Yondu's great. Uh, yep. No spoilers or anything, but he is fantastic in this film. Uh, he's, he plays a much bigger role. He's much more of a... He becomes kind of an outcast of the Ravagers, which sets the tone for a really great story. Mm -hmm. And he, he gets closer in with the Guardians, which is where he should be, because he's such a fantastic character. Um, yeah. yeah, the Ravagers are great. Uh, you get to see awesome. Sylvester Stallone uh, reprising his role as... Uh, I can't remember his name. I probably should have written that down before. <laughs> anyway, Sylvester Stallone Star plays... Star something. Yeah, he used Star to be... Streak or something. But anyway, he was part of the original. He was the original Guardians of the Galaxy in the comics. But now he's a Ravager in the movie. Such a presence, Stallone. Yeah. I mean, God, who'd have thought? <laughs> you know, less. fifteen years ago, if you'd have said, "Wow, Stallone has such a fantastic presence <laughs> in that film," I'd say Stallone. But in his old age, man, he is—he is like a fine wine. Right. He goes through his the vinegar <laughs> phase, and then he comes out. Smelling like roses. Yes, a kick-ass <laughs> actor. I can't get enough Sylvester Stallone now. He was so good. His role was very small in the movie, but man, it was just it was quality. Yeah. It was good. I'm excited about more Stallone in the Marvel Universe. Pretty Big time. cool. Pretty cool. And so, yeah, with his character, they end up bringing in a few of the other original Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Apparently, some of them are newer. They're still... Marvel characters, but they weren't part of the original, but they brought them in. Yeah, in if you're fans movies. of the old Guardians of the Galaxy, which I was not, I was really unfamiliar with the original Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. but after seeing the movie, I did a little research, and I was like, oh my god, that's so awesome that they did that. They, <laughs> so they're cool. reprising roles from, you know, the 70s in the comics, mm -hmm. man, and they're bringing them into the films, and they're not, like, explaining who they are, and it's just, they're just putting them in there. There's a million great... Yeah. Little Easter egg cameos. <laughs> oh my god! In this movie, man. I mean, just yes, just there are. <laughs> I could name them, but as you're watching the film, it's just like, oh my god, 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 through the whole thing. And if you're not, a, you know, it's if you don't know what it is, it's not going to ruin the film for you. You're not going to be like, well, what the hell yeah, is that? Yeah, man. If, you, if you're just, a fan, it is just eye candy from start to finish. Yep. Fantastic. And with an amazing soundtrack, <laughs> just like the first one, the soundtrack is just. It's like Gulf 104. It's like you're listening Street to oldies, clear channel, freaking radio. It's one classic song after the other. Uh, awesome. Jim Croce and, and Cat Stevens. As Chuck and would say it's Shauna music. It's Shauna music through and through. <laughs> but I mean, what, what Thanks, are some of Bob. the other? Yeah. 
It's, it's <laughs> Cocoa Beach music is what it is. Uh, so you got Cat Stevens, and I think I saw some Jim Croce in there, and yeah. uh, anything else that really um, stood out? I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but... Oh, uh... Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac. Mac. What's the one about, uh... Mandy, you're a fine girl. Oh, or... Brandy. Brandy, you're a fine girl. <laughs> See, I don't know this shit. <laughs> the sailor says Brandy. Oh, it's you're a fine girl. <laughs> Shauna's gonna sing it. Sorry. Um, yeah, it was great. Stan Lee, Stan Lee, you get not one but two cameos. Yeah. And these are actually important cameos. Normally, when Stan Lee just kind of appears in the film, he's just there and it's gone and it's funny. This actually has some potential. I'm not gonna say what it is. Was not? A potential future. <laughs> <laughs> for what's there's a fan theory out there, and yeah, if, you, true. if you know what I'm talking about, then you should get excited. Cause... You can't tell them what the fan theory is, at least. Eh, All right, what's the hell? Eh, we'll tell it. Okay, the fan <laughs> theory is that Stan Lee is the Watcher, who is a uh, he's an immortal being. He's a uh, who basically just kind of sits, but he appears in all the comic books, and he just he kind of observes things. He's just there all the time watching things, and if you think about that. From, a, from Stan Lee's cameo standpoint, it's an amazing role for him because he's been in every single yep. Marvel movie. And if you make him the Watcher, oh. I know, I just got goosebumps. What a great that's thing. Like, what a great way to carry on I means all these cameos too. have meant something. Yeah. And then, yeah, to carry on his legacy because he's like 93 right now. He's not going to be around. He's not going to be with us forever, sadly. But, man, that's... But to have him just be involved, like, even at that level even yeah. if he wasn't doing cameos anymore it's like oh he's there somewhere yeah he's gonna live on forever in these movies <laughs> and it's actually gonna have meaning so, so that was cool. great so much to talk about about this film um so you've seen all the trailers and you think you know it's not like deadpool where you see the trailers and you've seen all the jokes of the movie the stuff you saw in the trailers is in the movie but it's different in the yeah movie. so it's, it's not really cool. it's been extended <laughs> and changed like everybody saw that trailer where he's, he's got the little remote the bomb, the detonating, yeah. and then Rocket's talking to Groot, and he's like, you know, I am Groot. No, you idiot, don't hit the button. I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot. Rocket's but in like, the movie, yeah. Does anybody have any tape? Does anybody have any tape? <laughs> well, that extends, that little, like, 10 second clip of the, of the promo extends to several minutes <laughs> of hilarity. Great. So good, so good. Everything about it's fantastic. So just so, because you saw the trailers doesn't mean you saw all the jokes in the movie. Yeah. It's not the case at all, it's awesome. So we're gonna wrap this up. I give it, I don't really like it, actually. Four thumbs, five th ten thumbs up. Ten, ten thumbs, thumbs up is what Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 gets. It's ten awesome. big thumbs up. Can't... See, if you haven't seen the first one, go see the first one. Then get off your ass and go down to the movie theater and see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah, and if you didn't know this already, which you probably do, there's five post-credit post post yeah. sequences. Usually, there so used to be just one post-credit sequence. <laughs> then there was usually two post-credit sequences. Now there's, now there's five. five. So don't five go anywhere until they sequences. kick you out, because there's just yeah. post-credit sequence after post-credit sequence. And one of them will just knock your socks off. And I'm not going to tell you what that is, but it knocked my socks off. It sets up some <laughs> amazing things. Mm. If, you, if you're familiar with comics, if you're familiar with the Infinity Gauntlet book, you're going to shit yourself with one of these <laughs> one of these post credit sequences so anyway so we'll, just stay until the lights come on yeah we well, stick around so we'll wrap this up uh 10 thumbs up for the old guardians of the galaxy volume 2 thanks for watching and watch some of the other videos we have on this channel hit the subscribe button because we do a new show every single week and leave us a comment anyway that's about all we got thanks for watching chuckload of comics we'll be back soon bye